Hello there. Uh, welcome to clarifying uh, <laughs> the Celtic Cross, how I read. I am uh, your, well, reader for the moment, though I'm not going to actually do a reading at this very, very moment. Mark Angelo Lyons, Mal for short, president of Drawing the Circle Productions, professional witch, professional intuitive, and uh, just wanting to clarify a few things, particularly uh, depending on when you watch this, the next set of readings that I'm going to do for The Path of True Love. I was inspired last night by my guides to uh, only use a couple of decks, not as many as I usually do, uh, to specifically use the Celtic Cross, because the Celtic Cross, which is a spread that I've known I mean, it's older than I am, obviously. I'm fifty, going to be 52 years old this year. That It's been around, it feels like, forever. Um, and everybody reads it a little bit differently. So before I went into uh, doing the spread for this next series, uh, I wanted to clarify a little bit. First of all, I think for Path of True Love readings, which I love doing, and there's a whole conversation there that I will have in the actual videos, or, you know, just watch one of the old ones. I always explain it, what the Path of True Love is. But I think anytime you're looking at a journey, the Celtic cross spread is just really, really good for that. It's an eagle eye view. It's a, it's more like looking from a satellite point of view down at any topic or situation. So I thought for Path of True Love that would be helpful. Um, I've taught tarot for well over 20 years for sure. Um, and all of my students, we we do a whole segment on just spreads and making your own. And we always, always dissect uh, the Celtic cross. So I could, I could take what I'm going to do in this video and expand it into three hours easily. Not gonna, <laughs> not gonna. Just to clarify what I mean by uh, uh, the Celtic cross, how I read it, why I read it the way I do, and why I think it really is still not just classic, but one of the best spreads for not necessarily answering questions, but showing you like GPS, the lay of the land, as it were. Cool, cool. So um, just for example, this is a spread that I use with my clients all the time. Every time, no, but all the time, uh, depending on what they're coming for and amount of time. Because in a 30-minute session, 10 cards, that's three minutes per card, and that's like including shuffling and tuning. So for a half hour, I like to do something a little bit smaller or just, you know, do cuts, uh, pull cards from all different decks. If I have an hour, I know that I can do uh, a good Celtic uh, cross spread, which is 10 cards, at least the way I do it. Or, I mean, there's also the people will put that bar along the bottom. I forget what that's called. It was the Celtic cross. And then there was another piece, but that's from the first book that I ever read for a tarot handbook for new handbook for the apprentice or a handbook for the new apprentice, Eileen Connolly. <laughs> I can't believe I was reading Connolly at age 12, but I was, I was. Yeah, go read um, one of my mouth vlogs, tarot, the 30 years of tarot, how I came across it. It was actually because of a Justice League comic, but yeah, go watch, go watch the Malvog. You can go back, and even you can go back in my old videos uh, before I started doing readings on the channel. Uh, the three levels of tarot that I do teach, the uh, level one, level two, level three, there's an intro video for that as well. You can check that out. Um, that being said, uh, let me get down to it. Uh, when I do this for a client, this is what I'm going to be doing, for example, in the Path of True Love readings for February 2020. I don't know if I'll ever do it this way again. My guides kind of update me each time. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down 10 cards of the Daughters of the Moon Tarot and then clarify one card each, 10 cards of uh, the Healing with the Angels Oracle, Doreen Virtue. Now, when I do that for a client and we have the time to play, I would then grab the love pack, Chuck Spisano, right? And I could even get, like, archetype cards. And that's the thing. I love the Celtic cross. You can just build and build. I used to do it with runes, like actual rune stones and, and medicine cards and stuff. You can really go wild with it. I, it's really one of my favorite spreads. But one I don't see that often on YouTube. So, well, because it's long, you know, and it's, it's, it's involved. So uh, I'm just going to show you how I read it, because different people read it in different ways in terms of uh, the numeric pattern, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? I'm showing you how I do it and what I call the position of each card, right? So these are not shuffled for any intention whatsoever. I'm going to put them face down anyway, and I'll pop up pictures so you can see as we go. Cool, cool? Here we go. So card number one I call the cover. It represents the person being re uh, read. If you're reading yourself, it's you. Bam. <laughs> Simple, easy, 
peasy. Second card down uh, is the cross. So you've got the cover. What cross is the cover? Now, some people will say for good or ill. I kind of look uh, look at it as the environment, me meaning the, the energetic environment, like here's you, if I'm reading you, uh, the, the cover, then what is the energy that you're crossing into, the environment, right? And archetypally speaking, tarot, that could be a person, place, or thing that shows itself. In other words, that's the energetic, the new scene you've walked into, at least into this moment, right? More the present. Uh, underneath that third position I put under, this is where it gets everybody goes sometimes in a different direction, uh, the core, the, sub the, the subconscious influence, what's going on, uh, not just in the gut, in the subconscious, but even to an extent the soul, the, the, the intuition that knows things so deeply that it's not just... Um, an aspect of the subconscious mind, but there's something divine going on in there. Instead of thinking of it as so above, which we could get there, uh, something really as deep uh, within, what's going on at your core, right? Uh, then the fourth position is you're behind what's behind you, the recent past, but the past relevant to card number two. So card number four and card number two are interrelated. Okay, they are connected not just by being even numbers, but that helps. Uh, the fifth position is what I call the crown. Now that's not new. People have been calling the fifth position the top part of the cross, the crown, since probably the first time the cat the, the spread was written down. I was like, let's call it the crown. But the way I look at it, the way it's been shown to me, and every reader reads differently. That's why I'm clarifying it. This is just how I read it. You're free to live and let live, fairly take, fairly give. <laughs> Just do your own thing. This is my art form. Thank you very much. Um, I see it as sort of the immediate future, like the next step, what's coming into be, like a baby crowning, right? It's like you usually can't tell the gender of a baby from the head, right? You know, I mean, yes, amnio and sonogram and all that stuff aside, babies popping out, crowning. You, it's coming, it's coming. So it's like an indication. Well, we know it's a baby, we don't know the gender. Maybe we don't know who the father is either. So that would be card number five. That would be in that top uh, position there. So that, now we have um, our vertical axis. We have the core, card number three, the, the cover, card number one, and the crown, uh, card number five, creating that sort of straight line. Well, sort of straight line, uh, but that vertical line. That shows me the energy of the present moment. Uh, with a little peek into the future, but that which is crowning, that which is manifesting in the immediate future. Where then when I lay down card number six uh, here, creating uh, the, the full cross, I've got what is before you on the path. Not what happened before, that would be relative to past, but what lay before you on the path. So if you look at the correlation between the odd numbers, uh, one, three, and five, then you have <laughs> the cover, the core, and the crown sort of really showing me the client where they are in different levels of consciousness. Uh, and you look at the even numbers, four, two, and six, you're really looking at past, present, and future, right? That's why I like the simple timeline, uh, but Celtic Cross really is more of a complex timeline adding the uh, vertical axis. Oh, I said that right. <laughs> right. Horizontal and vertical axis. I think that way. Yeah. Look at a little Janet Jackson for you there. Uh, then, of course, there are the four cards that run up the side. Now, I read round cards, so I do, just for aesthetics, kind of curve them around that way. Uh, usually thought of as the staff. My staff got a curve in it. Only in the tarot. Uh, so, position number seven. Here, let me even back this up a little bit. These first five, uh, six cards, I call the microcosm because they really are about the client, what they're going through, the timeline of the subject of the situation. I don't usually uh, shuffle questions when I do. I ask my clients not to shuffle questions when we do the Celtic Cross. It's too much for like a yes or no, right? You want to say, I really want to know about blank. I want to know about my health, my career, my relationship with this, M my relationship with my cat, Melchior, who's just such a talker, and he's my earth sign, my Taurus. Come here, come sit with me, bugger. Come on. 
distractive as crazy. Uh, but that's really sort of more the personal world, where now, 7, 8, 9, 10, the staff, we're looking at more the universal stuff. We're looking at the macrocosm. So microcosm, personal world, come on up. Don't just meow at me. Come sit on your chair. Motherhood. It's not easy being a working mother and witch. There, chill out, buddy. <laughs> What's the point of being a witch who works at home without black cats everywhere? Anyway, so uh, this is the macrocosm. Small world, large world, because it's a small world after all. But this is more the universal, the divine, the mystical forces, right? So card number seven here, let's not use that one at the moment. It was the death card at the, at the bottom. Didn't shuffle it for anybody. Uh, this is the lesson. People will say uh, negative influences, and I get that, but the negative influences are usually the things that are trying to teach us lessons that we're trying to avoid and can can't, right? Otherwise, why would it pop up in a spread? So, uh, to, uh, what was it? Someone said it to me once. It's like, oh, what the gods are trying to teach you. I'm like, yeah, what the universe is trying to teach you. Lord's trying to tell you something. Have a little color purple moment there, right? So, uh, I like that for card number seven. It takes it out of the positive negative. Uh, position number eight, how the world sees you. Not new, but from the way I see it, read it, it's not from the, the the heights down. That's the whole reading, right? It's horizontally. It's like how you look to other people, like almost like your rising sign, how you appear to people. Because you can have all like <laughs> doom and destruction and despair and desolation going on in the microcosm, but in the eighth position have like the sun. It's like nobody knows because you're fronting. Right? You're, you're sort of like doing the happy thing and if it's just put on a happy face then don't expect people to give you help. You have to actually ask. Right? You know what I mean? So it's an interesting card and sometimes I think an incredibly helpful card because we can't see ourselves. Even when we look in a literal physical mirror or even something like this on video, can't, it's not the same as seeing yourself. Like, no, you can't really ever see yourself from the outside. Uh, so it's an interesting way energetically to see how you appear to people, not to everybody, but people obviously involved in a quantum sense with what's going on here, right? Whatever the, is going on in the subject. Um, I always have to explain uh, card number nine because, and, and this is why I'm doing this video so that I, when I say the position of the card is destiny, I don't have to explain it every single time. I can say to people, go watch the video. That's why I'm doing this. Fate and destiny are not the same thing. You can tell I've taught this. It feels like for 10,000 years. Fate and destiny are not the same thing. The position is called destiny. Fate is what you cannot change. Your eye color, your genetic heritage, right? Where you were born, the time you were born, right? It's like things, certain things are just written, right? Fate can't change them. Destiny is what you do with it if you learn, heal, grow, and become the best that you can be. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that's a big prayer that I do. May I help us heal, grow, become the best that we can be, fulfill our role in the divine plan for the well-being of all. Well, isn't that your greatest destiny? Your greatest destiny is the best. If you look at fate as lead, then destiny is gold. So this shows you not ultimately what your destiny is. A tarot card's not going to do that, but it can tell you where you are on the hero's journey of destiny in context with the entire spread. And that's why I like card number nine, but have to explain it. Uh, my regular clients already know. <laughs> They're pretty t tuned into the hero's journey before they come to me or certainly after they've sat with me. And of course, our last card down is the outcome. Now, the outcome, nothing is written in stone. The six and the 10, as far as I'm concerned, are still variable, mutable, unless they really are written into the divine plan, and that's how they are, but a tarot reading is not going to necessarily uh, change that, <laughs> right? If it is or if it isn't, it's not going to necessarily even tell you that. But uh, what I love about this spread in total is that it tells a story, both in terms of a timeline as well as a psychological aspect to a sense, right? The, with the, the, the vertical intersecting with the horizontal uh, axis. And then we have this on the side, right? The staff along the side that really gives more of a cosmic, mystical, spiritual, even divine perspective if you look at the lesson as, as that, that seventh position, that fate, that destiny, and really the energy that you're putting out there in that uh, eighth uh, card, I think, is always so helpful to know. 
whether or not, well, I'm balls to the wall anyway, but at least it's like, oh, is that how people are seeing me? By the way, it doesn't necessarily mean how you are. It can be how they see you. It's how the world sees you, not maybe exactly how you are. So sometimes that's like, oh, oh, I get it. That's why, right? So that you can adjust. That doesn't mean you have to accept their projection as truth. <clears throat> so uh, thank you so much. I just wanted to kind of get that out of the way. Now, just to say what I'm going to do for the soulmate readings, and who knows if they'll ever guide me to do this again. Let's say I laid out all those cards, and what would be the lesson here? Oh, meditation, right? What is that? Seven of Blades, meditation, Daughters of the Moon. So I'd say, okay, meditate on what? Oh, divine guidance. Uh, that would be a really, really hot seventh position to have on the path of true love. So uh, I'm really kind of psyched to do those. So yeah, just so you know, that's how I read. I just wanted to do a little clarifying quickie for you all. Um, so if you are new to my channel, again, please like and subscribe. I will certainly be able to do these on Super Live Chat because Celtic Cross is easy. You you shuffle the deck, bless it, put it down. I'm going to do that on camera, obviously. Uh, I don't need anybody thinking I'm preloading these decks. No, 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 no. I will shuffle right in front of you. But then once they are set, you could do it. Top 10 cards, Celtic Cross, just command it, and, and that's what it shows up. So uh, I, I can do these for each sign eventually, maybe a couple of times a week. Yeah, we'll see. Super live chat. So please help me get to 1,000 subscribers. Otherwise, um, thank you so much for watching. Please do uh, like and subscribe if you have not already. And uh, let's see how these... Uh, Path of True Love reads go for February, considering it's Valentine's month. <laughs> Talk about self-induced torture. Uh, wishing you the very best and the blessed, however, for the moment. Hell, farewell, and blessed, blessed be.